You know I'm right. Nick Durst here with Joe Callen Brees. And Joe, we are very excited for our guest today. As big fans of TLC, it's uh, it's great to, to get one of their stars on with us. Yeah, it is. And uh, for our listeners, obviously, you know, by this point, Nick and I usually have sports media people on, but kind of started doing our foray into the entertainment world. So uh, really, really big guests on here. We're very, very happy to have him on. Uh, he's one of the stars of TLC's hit show, Darcy and Stacey. Uh, we welcome the one and only Georgie Rusev. Georgie, welcome to the show. Thanks for doing this with us. Very different than what, probably what you usually do, but we're really happy to have you on. Thank you for having me. And also, um, I'll start, you know, my background is also sportive, so maybe I can fit in your, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah you are an athlete. Yep, that totally works with us. Georgie, you know, remember season two, you, you're out there playing soccer in, in the snow. Uh, didn't seem too pleasant. It seemed pretty difficult. How was that experience like? Well, usually when I play soccer, it's uh, when the weather is nice, no snow. Uh, but uh, even in the snow, I perform very good because back in Bulgaria, I was in a soccer team, actually. And uh, I kind of played professional soccer uh, when I was junior. So I love soccer. and uh, This is part of my life. So there you have it. So, Georgia, we got to ask you, uh, I don't know how much you follow professional wrestling, but was... Are you familiar with the former WWE wrestler, the Bulgarian brute, Rusev, and was he inspired by you at all? <laughs> Actually, I follow uh, wrestling, uh, especially when I was in Bulgaria with uh, of my friends. We were growing, we grow and watch uh, WWE was back in the yes. time, WWI, so the, the Federation. Uh, and it's, uh, we're very proud of, to have someone to represent us in this, um, you know, wrestling show. Uh, I would say when I was little, both of my friends, we watched the wrestling when we were big fans of The Rocks, Triple X, and all these people. And now when you have a Bulgarian guy, even with the same name with mine, it's, um, you know, and actually we're friends with him too. We communicate in social media. With ah. Rus- wow. That's yes. interesting. The Rusev is connecting. Well, uh, he, he has since moved. Don from WWE, he is in the other big company here, uh, AEW, and he is now known as Miro, but uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you mentioned you like The Rock. Is there anybody else off the top of your head when you were younger and you watched that you loved watching? I like, uh, I remember Rikishi, he was like very... <laughs> I'm not, yeah. <laughs> the Stinky uh, was... I don't want to say it, but the stinky, you know. Stink face, yeah. Stink face, yeah. yeah stinky face. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. So what, uh, you know, what, what really was your childhood like? You, you mentioned you played thought soccer, you watched the wrestling. What are some other things from, from your town that people enjoy? So when I was growing up, actually, um, I was focusing pretty much study a lot, of course. And uh, I was part of the soccer team. And also the athletic team, I was very good at the sprint and uh, high jump and long jump. So um, I was competing in the triathlon. And in the Republicans, actually, we win medals when I was a junior, around 16, 15 years old. So uh, the sport is always part of my life. And um, the sport is teaching you in, uh, um, you know, to be more um discipline yeah. yeah to be um disciplined more discipline more commitment to whatever you're doing because you know we need to put every day the work in the sport to become you know good sportists and the same in life you need to put every day the commitment and uh to be successful so i love sports and now whenever i have free time um i'm just going to the gym you know so. yeah for sure so how did the, the opportunity for you to move to America come about? And was there any hesitation on your behalf before making the move? Actually, I, I never, it was kind of last moment. All decisions in my life, they're kind of last moment. And I was like, okay, this sound good. This sound interesting. Let me, you know, try. And one of my friend, best friends, uh, he kind of offered me to go together. I was studying civil engineering in Bulgaria, uh, where I have a civil engineering degree. 
in Bulgaria. So this was like program work and travel. We're going to another country in America. Some of my friends, they went already here and I hear good things. So the plan was to come for one summer and, you know, to experience work. The work was lifeguard uh, to save some money. Of course, we don't save no money, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was good experience. And um, in the end, I get offer from the same pool company to stay and to work a little bit longer. And mm -hmm. since I finished school in Bulgaria, I was like, why not? You know, so I can stay a um, couple more years. And there you go. It's already been like almost 10 years being here. So you've been around. Uh, I wanted to ask you some of your favorite places that you've been to, uh, favorite cities you've been to in the country, uh, favorite spots to maybe grab a bite to eat. Uh, and what do you think, uh, I would say maybe culturally, or the biggest differences uh, between stuff that happens and, and what we do here you know, as opposed to where you came from. Yeah, definitely I love traveling. And uh, when you go in different countries, it's different culture, different vibe. And uh, here in United States, it's the same things. Every state is kind of different vibe, different nature. It's like separate, different country. Uh, I mean, the, the sites with, you know, country sites in Europe. So uh, I love traveling. I've been to Niagara Falls. Actually, my parents was here two years ago. We got take them to the Niagara Falls. We love them. It was my first time there, the first time there. Um, I love Niagara Falls. Um, we go to with friends to the Grand Canyon. It's an amazing place. Mm -hmm. Not close like in the world. Um, definitely need to be seen. Um, Arizona, where is like uh, the town when and the place where they film so many um, Eastern movies, cowboy movies. I love this place. It's so beautiful there. Uh, where else? I just, um, Maine, I've been there. I love the nature, the lobsters, the seafoods, yeah. the oysters. We have different oysters there. How you see and you've it. been everywhere. You've been to coast to coast. Yes, yes. So I love traveling. I've never been to San Diego and uh, to um, uh, New Orleans. That's the two places I want to visit and to see the culture and the food there. But yeah, everywhere is different foods, different vibes, and I love, I love to experience all this. Yeah, and I, it seems like you spend a good amount of time in Miami. Uh, what, what do you like best about <laughs> there, other than the fact that you're escaping that brutal Northeast weather in the winter? Yeah, definitely Miami is uh, one place where I visit often. And I love Miami. I mean, who don't love Miami, right? So Yeah. <laughs> <good>. Yeah. <laughs> good vibe, good food. Um, also, you can do anything there. If you want, you can go to a waxing place just to have some food, like down on the beach, go in yeah. the boat, um, or just to go party. I mean, and it was good escape from me, for me, when especially living in Washington, D.C. in the winter there, you get really bored. So the things what I do is I don't go out when I was living in Washington, D.C. I'm focusing my career, uh, working, working out, and I just once per one month or two months, I just jump to Miami, it's two hours flight. Yeah. And I go there just for a little vacation just to escape from the cold from Washington, D.C. And I always love it. And um, that's how we met with Darcy in Miami, actually. One of my trip. <laughs> we both were there at the same yeah. time for Super Bowl. And, you know, we decided to meet. And after so, that, it's just a history, you know. So from what I heard, you know, you kind of met Darcy... Uh, thanks to Instagram, perhaps a, a DM there. Um, give some advice to my co-host Joe here. He's single. He's ready to mingle. What's the What's the best strategy for him when he's he's DMing girls he perhaps wants to pursue? Well, the best strategy is focus in your career, in your life, about girls and whatever happened. This is gonna happen, right? So it was the same with me at the time. Actually, um, I was single. <sighs> Um, we talked with Darcy for uh, over a year in social yeah. media and I didn't expect it's going to go that far the conversation we just started like a friend and we talked for over a year actually and back and forth we had so many opportunities to meet but never was the right time so when we both decided to go to Miami it was like both okay this is the right time to meet right now and um, since then you know we're together so yeah. 
Incredible yeah. advice. I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when you look too much, so I've been in places, you know, when you look for love or looking for a partner, it's just, um, I, I, I can say, overkilling. Like sometimes focusing yourself, love right. yourself, focusing your career. Um, the, the, things, the good things are going to come to you anyway. So. Just yeah, you never, you never know. And basically, people always say, when you're least looking for it, that's when, that's when it happens. And you focus on your career. How did you, or when did you decide to pursue a career in massage therapy? And tell us a little bit about your business. So how I say in the beginning, when I come to the United States, I was working for a pool company. I started like, like lifeguard, supervisor, I mean, manager after the supervisor, supervising so many pools in the area. And at the time, I have friends of mine, Bulgarian uh, couple, and the girl, she was working like massage therapist. And mm-hmm. when I visited them, at the time, I was lifeguard. And I worked 10 hours, 12 hours in the pool. I mean, it's a fun job, you know. My parents, they told me before, nobody going to pay you when it's just sitting down. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> sitting down in the pool, in the sun, and I get paid. And it was amazing in the beginning, you know. And I'm in the pool having a good time. <laughs> of course, it's a very responsible job because I have a um, situation when I jump and save a couple of kids. Wow. All of that actually is a very responsible job and very stressful in times when so many kids, so many people come to the pool. But anyway, when I was lifeguard, I have this friend, she was doing massages and she was doing the same money. Let's say I was working 12 hours per day and my paycheck was, they paying me eight dollars per hour. Over time was ten dollar per hour, and I'm making like nothing, eighty dollars per per day. She was doing this only for tips per day, so I was start realizing that time so valuable. So this 10, 12 hours spending in the pool, I don't have time for anything, and I don't make no money. So yeah. it's a good job, but I wanted to use my time more, um, you know, beneficial. So I start getting my massage license. She helped me with the, you know, with the license, and that's how I decide to, to do massages because and I start charging like hundred dollar per hour, which is those, you know, my payroll for one day in the, mm-hmm. in the, and I may start making this for one hour. So right. I said the time is very valuable. I need to use your time, um, you know, properly. So that's how I start doing massage, uh, massages. I start working for some uh, massage place. Uh, massage studio and you know when you work somewhere they cut from your money because they provide you clients but after this was i wanted to after a couple of years i wanted to do my own massage business when you're visiting people and doing massages and you know get the whole profit for me yeah and more time to focus actually at the time when i was growing my massage business my my attention was to focus in uh, because in dc there's so many politicians so many I wanted to have nice clients, you know, so that's why I focus some of my clients, they're politicians, they're celebrities. And that was my goal. Uh, my clients was Sissy Paniston, Vanessa Williams. She coming all the time to, uh, to perform actually in the 4th of July in Washington, D.C. And that's when, you know, she was my client. Um, um, other politician billionaire, he's, uh, I don't want to say his name, but he's involved with the politics, big guy. So, I was trying to focus on this and um, actually it was great. And at the time I was focusing in the real estate because that was my other goal to, um, you know, use my other real estate, but because that's where is the big money too. So I was going to seminars, getting my real estate license for Virginia and doing my massages. And yeah. Yeah. Real estate is definitely a huge market and there's so many television shows for that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I like the, the entrepreneurial mindset, getting in there, working for yourself and make your own schedule. It doesn't, you know, and you don't have to, you know, it's not like your company is getting paid 70% of the session and you're taking 30. So it's definitely much better for you in that aspect. Um, so we wish you, wish you a lot of success there still moving forward, but that's impressive to hear some of those clients uh, that you had. So kudos to you, uh, with, Darcy, obviously, you, you met her um, way before the, the show started. Uh, what was your initial reaction um, when she said, hey, I'm getting the show. Uh, maybe we'll have you um, somehow 
be a part of it. And then for you personally, the first time you are have, getting filmed and there's a camera on you, was there any nerves? And uh, how long did it, did it take for you to get used to basically being followed around your every move? Yeah, so um, I didn't know, you know, we talked for a year, we meet in Miami, um, we go separate ways, I go in DC, she come to Connecticut, and she mentioned something, you know, she's, she's starting show and stuff like that, but I don't pay attention, so <laughs> I I, uh, I was focusing in, in my stuff, in my business, so um, whenever she's in New York, so it's between Connecticut and DC, sometimes I come to New York, that's how we met. I mean, how we keeping meeting because uh, it's between us. And from there, uh, it's the show is part of her life. So yeah. um, I don't have the, no choice. If I want to be with her, I need to be in the show because the show is about her life. So I wasn't having no intentions to be in the show. Like we don't plan it. It just happened because we start dating and uh, we have really kind of big connection between us. And um, yeah, that's how I um, become part of the show. And also... Um, if I'm used to how I get used to, I mean, I was doing modeling in Bulgaria too. So I'm being, uh, with the time I build my confidence to be in stage, um, being in big uh, fashion shows there. Also we're doing commercials in Bulgaria. So this is like being in the front of the cameras too. So I get used to very quick. Um, with the time, of course, sometimes you start feeling the season is like always cameras around you. At one point get annoyed, but uh, that's part of the life. So I'm just me. Um, yeah. that's, that's who I am. People don't know so, who I am. I'm just so with, with, with the cameras, like, you know, how's it work if you got to go to the bathroom? You're like, I'm going in, get away <laughs> from me, take my mic off. Like, I don't want you to hear that stuff. Well, I'm sure they hear some stuff, you know, they don't take the mic because we have some. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. I our friend, uh, the my guy, he's a good friend of ours. So I'm sure he's he hears so many things. <laughs> uh, is it a shell shock seeing yourself uh, on TV? Because I, I didn't know you were in commercials until you just mentioned it. So obviously you've had, you know, experience being in front of a camera and seeing yourself on TV. Um, so is there any type of reaction there every time you watch yourself back and, and you think to yourself like, like, wow, you know, I'm really on, you know, reality show here. Um, how does that work? Actually, I never, how to say, like, I never, I mean, I like to watch because you never know, you know, <laughs> how they want to add everything. Um, and see myself, you know, we can learn also, you know, how to uh, be in camera better or what you need to fix in yourself. Um, and um, I mean, if so you self would you say you like self critique yourself and when you watch certain scenes back, maybe you catch yourself doing something or maybe you have certain habits where you're thinking to yourself, okay, the next time, you know, we're doing, we're recording a scene or doing, you know, a scene for another episode. I'm not going to do that. You know, this, that, that's, 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 that's our, that stuff crush your mind too. No, really, because pretty much um, the, the show is about the relationship between me and Darcy. So yeah. that's why, you know, they don't show my, uh, what I go through uh, in life in general, they don't follow my story too much. Uh, they follow more the relationship with me, between me and Darcy and the relationship between Ford and Stacy. So uh, it's so popular pretty much. That's a show is about a uh, documentary about the relationship. So they don't focus too much in, in, in me. Um, they show whatever they want to show. And um, it's just, uh, it, it's not acting. I mean, it's a real story, but they don't show the whole situation. Yeah. They can, even like when they make movie documentaries, movie about celebrities, about big uh, um, uh, legends, they show only one part of the of, of, of the, their life. They cannot show everything. So it's the same with with the show. Even if so many seasons, serious episodes, they cannot show everything. They shouldn't just showing some part of it. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's good to see yourself, you know, in TV. Absolutely. It's, it's so change me i'm who i am even though my friends they say you're the same person yeah and i am always i'm gonna be i mean very grounded person so did you notice uh you know after the first episode or after the first season a significant difference in your social media following and uh you know how you know this is a way we have some reality stars on with us and you know i give you kudos because 
a lot of you, you get these followings and you're able to really capitalize on it, whether it's, you know, brand deals or sponsorships. So just curious for you, you know, from the first season or from the first episode, how things changed for you personally with your social media? Yeah, definitely from the first season, I grow some followers, uh, but uh, I don't really have a lot of followers because these days, let's say many years ago, if you have 100,000 followers, that's a lot, you know, people right. that want uh, to collaborate with you, doing promotions and stuff. Now, these days, it's normal to have millions. So people that want to work with celeb, no celebrities, but influencers who have at least a million followers. So 100,000 for right now is nothing. So it's just very basic uh, situation. But yeah, I grow some uh, followers uh, from the first season. The second, not that much because I guess people, they don't like me too much in the second season. Let me let me just say that uh, social media, you take it how it comes. You know, you interpret it however you want to interpret it. Uh, there's plenty of good. Uh, I think it's really good. It's a good way for people uh, to connect with each other, especially if you have similar interests. But uh, I'm sure as many fans as you do have, you have a bunch of haters and you can tell the haters to kiss you. You know what? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't really to worry too much about that. Yeah, I mean, always they're going to be haters no matter what. What are you doing in life, even, uh, you know, before the show, Always I have haters because I'm doing stuff and some people, they just jealous for no reason because yeah. they don't want to focus. The haters pretty much, they have their own problems and they don't want to focus on their own problems. So that's why they focus on someone else's problems and they hate so to forget about their own problems. So I just kind of feel sorry about the haters because they need to go and deal with their problems. I really feel so sorry for them. So that's why I even don't want to reply them back because I feel sorry for them. That's people who really have any some big problems in their life and they need to focus on their problems and deal with it. Not to yeah. worry about some of those problems. I mean, I do whatever I want. I don't do, always do follow my heart. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the haters. Georgie, you, you couldn't haters, have been any more right. And you haters, not have been any more right. And the haters is just can motivate you to do better because if you do better, they're going to start hitting you even more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, Joe, you know what they say, haters shake your hand, but you keep the sanitizer on deck. So you just trail that, trail that away. Yeah, That's couldn't true. have been any more right. And he came on the perfect podcast for that one. So, um, Georgie, so we're going to ask you here about long-term goals uh, because uh, you came here, you already have proven yourself to be successful uh, when it comes to being an, an entrepreneur and now uh, the fact that Darcy and Stacey has been as successful as it is, your profile is getting out there more. Uh, do you have any specific long-term goals that you're looking to achieve here? Uh, do you have any plans to maybe go into business elsewhere? Is there something that you've always wanted to do, especially when you were younger, that you never had the opportunity to do, but now uh, you've created the opportunities for yourself to be able to, to go into that direction? So what are you looking here? And I'm not looking like, like too far into the future. I'm looking here for like the next couple of years, maybe the next five to 10 years. Yeah, definitely. My goal is to be successful. That's why um, I decided to, to you know, um, stay here because in America, so many opportunities. I mean, everywhere you can be millionaire, everywhere you can be successful. Don't get me wrong. Actually, in Bulgaria, I read some article that one of the country with uh, becoming more millionaires for the last year was Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria. So you can be everywhere successful. Uh, the thing is, I just decide here because even I don't know why, I just go with the flow, right? So, uh, but yeah, my goal terms, it's um, always, I'm looking for, how I say, to use your time in the right way. So my goal is I really want to focus in the real estate because when you look around, everything is real estate. I mean, you staying in your apartment in your home is real estate. I'm staying in yeah. mine is real estate. You're going to the gym is real estate. You're going to the shop is real estate. Everything around us is real estate. And always going to be real estate no matter what. And the bank in the end give you money to buy a house, but they don't give you money to buy a restaurant because they know it's not that big risk to invest your money in real estate. So I really love real estate and my background is uh, civil engineering. So I really want to focus on uh, real estate, being to so many seminars, multifamily uh, properties and different seminars. 
so I'm working some projects also um, start getting my real life real estate license and um, that's one of the things I really want to focus and I I always wanted to create something new something that is not out there I mean that's really big long term but like um, you know so many Bulgarians they create let's say Robin Hood is Bulgarian guy the first guy who right. created computer is Bulgarian guy, Jonathan Asuf. Actually, not many people they don't know, but he's an immigrant from Bulgaria who created the first computer. So always I wanted to create something that is not out there to help the, help the people. Um, but during this process, you know, of course, I want to do real estate. Also, rose oil, I'm focusing on that. You can see maybe in the nice. next season about rose oil, talk a little bit about it. I have in Bulgaria is one of the best rose oil around the world. Uh, we have a huge uh, rose valley next to my town where I grew up. And um, yeah, we export one of the best rose oil around the world. And I have a friend who have a land with rose oil, have a factory. Uh, so we're thinking about some product to create some products and, you know, sell rose oil too. So we have different ideas, of course. Everybody has so many ideas. Yeah. And take time to be successful. And most of the people, they don't see the process to go to be successful. You know, one day when you see the success, they don't see what you're going through. And I'm right now in this process. I mean, you need to be patient. You need to do so many up and downs during this process. Uh, but I think I can't take anything so to be successful. Yeah, certainly makes a lot of sense. What what for you is kind of like your, your you know I'm right moment, either in your life or personal relationships. And by, by that, we mean a scenario where you know, you want to do something and everyone keeps saying, no, Georgie, you can't do this this way. This is the only way to do it. Um, and then you, you kind of said, you know what, I'm going to do it my way. And ultimately you'll see why it is that I am right. Well, pretty much that's how I'm in life. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, of course my parents, they uh, always telling me I need to do the right things, you know, but always I do my way. And in the beginning, they don't accept that because I mean, their parents, they want the best for me, but I never disappoint them. So um, people who know me, uh, they know um, in the end, I'm gonna make my own decision and I'll do whatever I want to do. And um, always uh, is winning, always I'm right. Well, sometimes I'm not right. I don't wanna be this way. <laughs> but um, of course, there are so many mentors. I, I, I want to learn. I Always you can learn from people who are successful. And, and uh, you know, I go a lot, of, a lot through life and um, I know a lot, but always it's good to learn. So yeah. I don't mind to, I know, ask people who are successful, who give me advices, let's say successful uh, businessmen or who is something involved with the real estate. I don't mind to, you know, talk with them for advices and they tell me the way to go uh, because that's priceless, the information, and um, how to be successful, how to follow your goals, that's priceless. And uh, I mean, you're learning every day from life. I mean, you, maybe you can know so many things, but you're learning every day new things. So, yeah. All right, so Georgie, we have the, the continuation of, of the season here. We got new episodes coming real soon. Uh, my wife, she, she's very excited. Hopefully we see a lot more of you and Florian doing scenes together because there's always some some really funny moments there but overall what can we expect uh from the continuation of this season yeah so the new season uh continuation from the last one is coming soon in january and i hope everybody's excited about because there is new things coming of course all this show is about following following the relationship between me and darcy stacy and foreign up and down some life um, there is so many things um, it's about to happen and you just need to see and to see what's happening. Of course, it's going to be funny moments. It's going to be drama. It's going to be crying. It's going to be laughing <laughs> like always. So yeah. but, um, uh, it's great things coming. So um, we're going to see, we're going to watch and see in January. Georgie, thanks again for doing with this with us. We really, really appreciate it. You are tremendous. You're hilarious. Uh, you certainly have a, a ton of charisma. Um, I, I want my, my last question before I let you go is um, trying to keep it 
full circle here. Uh, I'm curious, your favorite, uh, and I'll say football, because that's how it is where you come from. For here, it's soccer for us. Uh, so are there any clubs that you like following up on? Uh, and what is your opinion regarding like that and soccer here in the United States? Because it's not as popular as where you came from and it's not as popular in Europe, but it's certainly continuously growing uh, here in the United States. Uh, so yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, even before I was in the show, there's one player, uh, Zwatan Ibrahimovic, and he's a big player, popular player. Yeah. So um, once when I was in Miami, I was in the bar and two girls and one guy standing next to me. And one of the girls a little bit is kind of squeezing around, takes a selfie with me without I'm knowing. Another girl too. I was like, you know, I'm not celebrity. Why are they doing that? So the guy come to me and show me pictures of what in Brahim would say, they think that's you. And actually, yeah, I was <laughs> start realizing that they really look like Zlatan Ibrahimovic because so many people, um, I mean, he's not he's a little bit bigger than mine. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of people, they uh, mistake him with Zlatan Ibrahimovic, especially in Miami, where all yeah. the players are going for vacation there and the thing was me. Um, he's a great player. And um, actually, we have a little bit the same attitude too. So, <laughs> so um, I love sport also. One of the biggest players live in Miami, uh, Christos Tuchkov, he played in Barcelona. He's legend. He's in the win the, the gold ball, the gold shoes. Um, he's in the level like Maradona and Pelé. And um, we're very proud of him. He's an amazing um, player of the soccer. So all of us we love soccer. That's a great story. And I totally see it. Yeah. Thanks again. Uh, tell our listeners where else they can find you if they want to follow you on social media hopefully they're not going to hate on you but uh if there's anything else you would like to share promote go right ahead but thanks again for doing this with us george we really appreciate it yeah thanks so much yeah you can uh, follow me follow my personal life in my instagram page george rusev that tv um there's only one there <laughs> you can find me easy and you can follow if you hate and follow um you don't need to leave your nasty comments just leave beautiful comments we appreciate that <laughs> and yeah just um you know be positive for everybody enjoy life enjoy the little moments because after the COVID, we learn so much that we need to enjoy little moments and it's interesting how uh, after COVID, people talk about the little things how they need to appreciate everything they start reopening everything people forget about little things once yeah. again so we need to remember that last year was horrible thing. Everybody go through horrible things and we're still going through these horrible things. So everybody be safe, be positive, appreciate the little things and, um, you know, do whatever you need to do and let happen and whatever needs to happen in life. So Very well said. Georgie, we appreciate your time. And that's going to do it here for this episode of You Know I'm Right for our very special guest, Georgie Rusev, my co-host, Joe Calabrese. I'm Nick Durst and this has been you. No, I'm um, right.